it's Lisa from Stuff and Such by Lisa. LisaStuff.blogspot.com I'm here today with a video to show you how to make the little slippers for the American Girl doll that are on McCall's pattern M5019. Here's a close-up of the actual house slippers. I'm making this for my um, my niece and I had a little bit of trouble with these shoes and that's why I'm going to show this video because I'm somewhat of a beginner, not really a beginner sewer, more intermediate, but certain things give me trouble with sewing. I'm certainly not an expert and one of the things I had trouble with were these shoes, these little slippers. This is the first one I made. So I decided that for the next one I will show this video to help out somebody else that might be having a problem. Okay, so at this point in the instructions, when you get to the slippers, the here are the instructions. It's step number 23, slippers. And as you see here, it says to prepare the slippers following general instructions. And you basically pin interfacing to the, all the pieces. And there's it's hard to tell now because I've already done the interfacing on them. You can see where I put the interfacing on the pieces. But when you cut this out, you, you know, you'll see if you do the pattern, you have two of these and two of these for each shoe. So all together there's four of this shape and four of this one. But I've already done most of the steps here. I'm up to this step here, which is number 27, where you place this piece on top of this interface piece right here. So this is the step that I'm at right here. You're basically going to attach it right here and then you're going to e-stitch and this is one of those things I always have trouble with because my machine you know, it says to do a long machine stitch to e-stitch and then you pull them to gather it a little bit right here well, it's not really gathering. They call it ease stitching. But my machine, the smallest stitches, or the biggest stitches, aren't really that big, and it makes it hard to do with real thick material like this. So I just hand did it. I don't know if you can tell here, but I just... I don't know if you can see the hand stitching, but I actually hand stitch it just to make it a little easier. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to attach it See how it's narrow, now more narrow here. You're going to attach it. There's the interface side. You're going to attach it here, and then you're going to pull up the this stitching a little bit once you get it attached, so that it kind of. To me, it looks like a gathering. So I don't know why they don't just call it gathering, but they call it ease stitching. So anyway, I'm going to turn the camera off and do that part so that or pin it down and, and pull the the e stitching so you can see what I'm talking about and then I'll be right back okay now I've got this pinned on you can see how I've got it pinned on um, matching the dots there where it's supposed to be pinned and then I pulled these strings right here these threads I mean just a tiny bit to buckle it here, you know, or to ripple it here just a little bit, like it said in the instructions, so that it fits. And then that is actually 27 where it shows that. And it says with interface side up, pin top to each interface sole, matching symbols, and adjust and then just the ease and then stitch so this is called the ease so now I'm ready to stitch it and another reason I wanted to show this video was to just give you some comments in case you've never sewn the uh, fleece before it's it's real difficult to sew sometimes especially when you've got this many layers so be careful with your sewing machine. Make sure you're using the right needle and you're going to have to go really slow because even with the right needle, sometimes fleece is real difficult to sew. 
um, it actually sounded like at times it was going to break my needle so I had to go really slow um, so be careful when you're doing that uh, and it's kind of awkward too because it's such a small size see how tiny it is and um, I've made a few American Girl doll clothes before but never shoes so it's it's a new experience for me even though I've been sewing for a while this is kinda new so um, I just wanted to let you see some of the problems I was having in case you're having the same ones so um, I'm gonna go do that I'm gonna go sew this down like the instructions say and then I'll come back for the next step okay so when you get it sewn on it'll look something like this and now if you want you can take out this ease stitching. It doesn't say to do that, but just for me it was just easier to use a little bit lighter color for the ease stitching and then just be able to pull it out or you know um, take a seam ripper and rip it out when I'm done. Um, and also it doesn't it didn't say in the directions to trim this but I was thinking that maybe one of the reasons I had so much trouble with the thickness last time is because I didn't trim the interfacing and there is one section in the general instructions that talks about trimming seams and stuff so um, in most cases you want to trim interfacing too depend it just depending so since I'm not real experienced with making the shoes I don't know if it's going to make a difference but I thought I'd try it on this shoe just to see if it makes it easier but I still it was still pretty hard to go through these thicknesses so I still had to go really slow when I sewed it so anyway now we'll move on to the next step um, which is okay we just finished 27 and now we're going to on 28 it says with right sides together pin remaining sole sections to sole with top matching symbols stitch leaving an opening on one side for turning and I got really confused by this step I'll tell you at first I didn't understand why I would be having to turn anything wrong side out and because I was thinking for some reason that the shoe was gonna look basically like this you know like this type of house shoe and then I looked at the picture and of course that's not what the picture looks like see so I'm like, okay, I see, I get it. The house shoe's going to be smooth, and it wouldn't look right if I did it like this, because then you'd have the bare bottom. So, anyway, so now the next step is that we're going to place this piece on top. Okay, before I do that, before I put that, do the next step, I'm going to pull this out, and then I'll be right back. I'm just going to pull that E stitching out. Okay, one more thing before I sew that piece on. Um, like I was telling you before, even though the instructions don't specifically say to trim the seams, in the general instructions it does tell you, unless otherwise noted, to trim all seams. Um, so I'm thinking again, like I said, that that's why I had the problem on that last shoe. Um, though this type of material is going to be hard to sew anyway because it's so thick but I think I made it worse <laughs> by all the layers that I had so of course you're still going to be sewing <clears throat> right there along that seam line so you're still going to have a lot of thickness but it might help when you turn it anyway when you have to turn it to not have all that bulk in there so you might want to trim those seams too I'm going to do that on this shoe um, just to see if that helps okay see now here's how I've trimmed it I kinda graduated it gra uh, trimmed it in a graduated fashion all the layers see you see the uh, facing there or interfacing in the layers so now I'm gonna sew the top part on like it, the instructions say I'm gonna take this piece and it says with the right sides together so this is the right side and then this is the right side so basically we're gonna sew that piece on to that piece and then you're gonna leave an opening right here so that you can turn it and be real careful when you do this because this piece here you're gonna have to kinda 
you know, do this to it while you're sewing to keep it from getting caught, you know, in the seam. Because you want it, if it gets caught in the seam, too much of it gets caught in the seam, then it won't be, you know, it won't be big enough to fit on the doll's foot. You know, you have to have enough room here. So you don't want to get too much of it caught in the seam. So that was something I had to look out for when I was sewing it. You know, just make sure that while you're sewing, you're going to go slow again, of course. And then just make sure that stays you know out of the seam okay so I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back okay so I thought it might help to show some of this part I don't know how good it's gonna turn out because I've never tried actually focusing the camera on the sewing machine before and I'm certainly no expert videographer so but we'll try it and see how it turns out Okay, so like I told you, we're sewing that piece on the top of the shoe. Here you can see the top of the shoe and how I pushed it in like I was telling you about. Okay, so that I don't get it caught inside the seam. And like I said, you have to go pretty slow. I don't know if you can hear the sound that my sewing machine is making, but it's really having a hard time going through all this fabric. So that's why I'm going really slow because I don't want to break the needle or I don't guess it could hurt the machine, but and I don't know, I'm like I said, a more experienced sewer might know a better way to do this or might be able to do it fast, but I'm just real cautious because I don't want to have to do it over again. So I'm taking it easy. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up so you don't have to sit here and watch the whole thing since I'm going so slow, but I'm basically going to just finish sewing it around here, leaving this opening on the side here to turn it. So then I'll come back and show you that part after I get done with the sewing. Okay, so I finished sewing that now, that piece, that top piece, or that piece on top of the top. <laughs> uh, and there's where I left my opening to turn it. So this part was hard last time, and uh, it's probably going to be hard this time too. But I didn't want to leave a big, a big huge opening because then it makes it harder to close it up and have it look neat. So anyway, so you just turn it right side out. Oh, this is, of course, really hard with little tiny doll clothes. <laughs> and you, you have to be a little bit careful with this fleece, too, because you can stretch it. And if you're using felt, I started to use felt for the shoes, but I couldn't find the right color. The, all the blues were too dark or too light to match the pajamas, so I just ended up using the same fleece material that I used for um, the pajama shirt. So, anyway, um, if you use felt, felt is even more delicate and it will not only stretch but it can rip so just be careful if you did felt but if you're using the fleece it probably it will probably hold up it just it just will stretch if you're not careful okay uh oh looks like I didn't do a very good job of catching that seam there okay so that's not good I may have messed up there by trimming that. Well, I just didn't catch it in the seam. See where I messed that up? So I'm going to have to re sew that. I'm going to have to pull it out and re sew it. Oh boy! <laughs> because I didn't catch it right there in the, you know, in the seam where it was supposed to. So anyway, I'm going to redo that part and then I'll come back and show you the rest. Okay, now I re-sewed that and I fixed 
where I messed up that seam. So here you see I've turned it right side out. This looks a lot better. And you'll have to work it a little bit to smooth out the seams and the you know all the layers that you have in there. And then this is what you'll be left with right here. This little opening, you know, where you had to turn it. So you're going to need to slip stitch that closed. And uh, that's the next step in our instructions. 29 where it says turn right side out, which we've already done. We've already done that. And then slip stitch the opening. Right here it shows you. Now I have a lot of problems slip stitching. Like I said, I'm not an expert sewer and I've just never been able to get slip stitch down to where it looks neat. So, um, on the other shoe, what I did was I started slip stitching, but then I just ended up kind of top stitching it by hand. Which still didn't look that neat, but it doesn't hardly show. So, that's for me, that was just the easiest thing to do because I just... When I slip stitch, I can never get it to look neat. So, But anyway, do whatever works best for you. It, the instructions tell you to slip stitch it. So I'm going to go back and do that step, and then I'll come back. Okay, I'm back, and what I did was I, top, I slip stitched around here, and then top stitched the rest of it by hand. But this one didn't turn out very good. As you can see, it's not very even here. So... I don't know. I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is because when it's on her feet, you can't tell. So I'll show you. One good thing about fleece is it's a little bit flexible. So this one was really tight. This one didn't turn out quite as good as the other one. As you can see, this one turned out fairly good. And it fits real good. This one, for some reason, does it is, doesn't fit as well. I think I made the the seam too narrow here but anyway luckily fleece stretches a little bit so we'll put them on her force them on her <laughs> on her big feet there we go and there you go you have your little house shoes for your American girl Okay, thank you for joining me today.